Okay, so here's just a quick thing um, that kind of pertains to a few of my classes uh, that I think you might be interested in. So if you're in um, biostatistics or um, psycholinguistics, some of my other classes, um, this might be interesting to you. Uh, this is who I'm calling a Tao and Sherdlu. It's actually not a real person. Um, he's a, it's a computer-generated AI. Uh, human, which is also a cool thing, like a cool statistics thing, but um, they just take a bunch of pictures of somebody and put them together. Um, I think it kind of looks a little bit like Elon Musk, a little bit like Fred Armisen, um, and just in general, like some British guy. That's what it looks like. Anyway, um, and Wordle is what we're talking about. So what is Wordle? Like, if you don't know, are you are you kidding? It's totally like a thing people know about Wordle. But if you don't, it's a free game. Right now it's free. Recently bought by the New York Times. So might not be free forever. So if you if you think it sounds fun, jump on it quickly. Uh, but what you do is you guess a five letter word and you have no initial hints. Going in, there's no, there's no hints. It's just five blank boxes. Um, if you guess a letter and it comes up gray, like the G here, that's not in the word. So now, once you make a guess, you have information. Once you make one five-letter word and hit enter, you have some information. Gray letter is not in the word. A yellow letter is in the word, but it's not in the right place. And a green letter is in the word, and it is in the right place. You have six guesses. The goal is to guess the word within six guesses. So remember... Al Kindi. If you're in my stats class, you definitely should remember Al Kindi. Um, if you're in my psycholinguistics class, or I mean language science class, um, you don't, you have no idea who Al Kindi is, but I'll tell you really quickly. So Al Kindi is an early statistician. Um, he's the guy, if you, again, if you're from stats, uh, he used central tendency and frequency to uh, be the first code breaker essentially. So to decipher messages, the first person to use math and statistics and linguistics to decipher codes from enemies, which is cool. So for linguistics people, um, he's essentially using letter frequency. He's counting up how often letters occur in uh, a language or a type of document and using that letter frequency, the knowledge of that languages, it's not really their phonology, graphology, using the knowledge of that language's graphology to predict what a coded message likely is. Um, <clears throat> as you might know, there's predictable trends to how common letters are in any given language. Zipf's Law, uh, if you're from psycholinguistics, Zipf's Law is something you know about. Um, some letters occur far more often than others. Some words occur far more often than others. So this is something we know. There's predictable trends, really predictable trends to letters and words. This is a branch of linguistics called computational linguistics. And this is exactly where stats and linguistics meet. A Tauan a Sherdlu is not just that guy on the front. There are also the 12 most common letters in English in order. So we know about this because of basically the same kind of thing that Al-Kindi did, uh, was counting up uh, the letters in order. Uh, other sources have found something that's more like Eaton Osserhold, uh, but it's basically the same same general idea as a Tau and Sherdlu, but flipped. Here is letter frequency for English, French, Spanish, Finnish, and Swedish. So you can take a look at that if you want to pause the video. But again, English, it's just showing the same old Itaou and Sherdlu thing. Um, what is a good guess for Wordle? Well, a tone uses six of the five most common letters, right? So Itaou and Sherdlu, it, it just doesn't use the I. Um, it also provides information for three of five or six, if you're considering Y, vowels. 
Um, Stone and Stain are also good guesses. They use a lot of the, those first Italian Sherdlu letters. Um, they provide a little bit more information about consonants. So depending on what your strategy is, vowels or consonants, then either of those are good guesses. Um, the thing is, letter frequency is based on independent probability, but language not isn't necessarily. So we know all this stuff. We know about code breaking. We can look at independent probability. We know the one that occurs most often is probably E in, in English. But when we're trying to guess one word, we don't have that huge data set. And we can just say like, oh, most often occurring is E. It's one, one word. And so when we're looking at one word, we can actually do some other stuff. We can look at, at things that aren't independent probability. Um, we know that a grapheme and phonemes is dependent on the previous. So certain sounds occur more often after others. In English, S occurs a, a lot at the end and a lot at the beginning. In the middle, not so much. Um, we also know, well, I guess I should say two letter combinations are called digraphs. And there are some digraphs that are very common in English. Thaneron is a word that you can make out of four of the most common digraphs, T-H-A-N-E-R and O-N. Uh, there's also F-F and E-E -E and O-O. -O. Uh, those are the double letter digraphs that show up a lot. And L-L. Um, so if we use this, we can use the word other, which uses two of the four most common digraphs, TH and ER. So this could be another word that would be a really great guess for your first, um, your first guess at Wordle. And then I found this. This is the actual frequency of all the Wordle letters uh, and where they occur. So we can see that it's close to a Tau and Sherdlu or eat or hold, but it's not exactly the same. And that's because the Wordle words are curated. They're not just every word that is five letters long. The dude that created it um, had his uh, partner look at the words that all of the possible words that could be, and uh, he had her rate them on how, how well she knew them. Like, how well do you know this word? Is it a crazy word? Or is it something that you actually know? So it's a curated list of words which might uh, affect the frequency of the letters and where they show up. So one thing that we know, well, let's see. So how well did we do? I'll come back to what I was going to say. How well did we do with our words that we came up with? Well, a tone... Um, I'm adding these probabilities together um, because I'm not I'm not computing the probability. Again, this is statistics people. Um, you'll definitely get this. Psycholinguistics, uh, language science folks, if you understand it, that's okay. But you don't have to at this point. It's, it's fine. Um, I'm not computing the probability that a tone is the correct word. And I'm also not computing probability that those words in any combination exist together. I'm computing the probability because that would mean that I would have to multiply 10.65 by 8.46 by 7.77 by 6.51, all that, which is not what I'm doing. I only want to know the combined probability of any one of those letters. That means I can add the probabilities together if I'm just looking for any one of them, right? It's like you're gonna roll a dice. The probability that I get a six or a one is not one sixth times one sixth, it's one sixth plus one sixth. Um, so it's one third. So in this case, we can add all these probabilities together. Just probability that I'm gonna get any one letter correct, not even in the right place, just anywhere in my guess. So a tone is about 37%. Stone is 34, stain is only 31, and other, when we actually take into account the digraphs, um, is 35. So in this case, what we see is that going off of 
a Talon Shirdlu. One of ours is really good, so a Tone is pretty good. But then the others that come off of a Talon Shirdlu, Stone and Stain, are decent, but other is actually better looking at digraphs. So a different way of looking at letter frequency in words. But placement also matters. So this is all just any letter anywhere. But placement of these letters also matters. Like, look at this. You could take any four-letter word, like pick, and you could have picks. And you should have a lot of S's in the, in the final bar. But we don't. We don't see that. And the reason for that is Wordle does not use, letter, uh, does not use a lot of words that is just a four-letter word pluralized. There could have been a lot more, but there aren't. So S is heavily weighted towards the front. S only occurs in 5.7, uh, roughly 5.8 of the Wordle words, but almost all of that 5.8% is in the first uh, zone. So going back to this graph, we can see that maybe our word atone doesn't give us the best chance of getting a letter in the right place. So it gives us a good chance of getting any one of the letters correctly, but not in necessarily the right place. A for a tone, it's one of, it's like the second place uh, of the two, like the third and fourth place is where this A would be. So actually the, the it is the fourth place. So it's almost the worst placement for A. T uh, here in the second place is the worst place for the T. O here in the middle is decent. That's not too bad. N in the, the second to last place is good, and E in the last place is good. So it's really our A and our T that are not so good for a tone. And then stone, well, the S starts off great. The S should be there. Then we've got T in the worst place. It could be O is okay. N is good, E is good. So stone is actually not too bad for guessing a letter that's in the right place, but we can, I think, do better. And the word that I came up with from looking at those probabilities is the word ba -ba shale. So it only has a 34.5% chance of getting any one of those letters correct, but there's an 11.35% chance of getting one in the right place. So notice that a tone is the best. A tone is almost 37% chance of getting um, any one of those letters correct, but only a 9.9% .9 chance that you're going to get in the right place. Uh, stone is noticeably lower than a tone, but 11.1% um, that it's going to be in the right place. Uh, stain is just moderate in every way. Other is good for finding uh, any one letter, but really bad at getting it in the right place, interestingly. And then shale is middle of the road for finding any one letter, but the chance is high that you would find it in the right place. So that could potentially cut down on the number of guesses that you have to make. So... What if we're going to score these? I went to a website that is um, the Wordle Archive that allows you to play any of the Wordles that there already have been. So far, there have been 220, 230, something like that. So I have 230 possible things. So going to a random one of these and entering my first guess, either a tone, stone, stain, other, or shale, um, this is what I ended up with. Um, so... I'm not going to walk you through these because that would be annoying for you to listen to, I think. But you can pause it and you can look at it. But what I did was I broke it down into a score. So I scored nothing right as a zero. Um, one right but in the wrong place as one point, And something that is right in the right place as two points. And five observations each. And what you see is a tone... Got 10 points, stone only got four, 
Stain got 13 other got 7 and Shale got 17 points. We take a look at that. And we're just counting up the number of actual right guesses. A tone, uh, you know, not taking place into account. A tone gets one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, it gets seven. Stain actually gets eight. Yeah, stain gets eight. Other gets one, two, three, four, five, six, and shale gets one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So if we're not taking the right place into account, then a tone stain and shale are pretty much even. But if we're taking the right place into account and giving it, considering it as two points, then it actually does look like shale is a little bit better um, for an opening guess. And the way that we came to this conclusion is by using linguistics, uh, computational linguistics, so statistics and language science. Um, so how the game actually unfolds after your first guess, all this is just about the first guess. And that's not the whole thing with Wordle. It's not just the first guess. Um, it's a combination of the linguistics knowledge you have about English your experience with English, because your actual personal lexicon is going to be different than somebody else's. So a word everybody thinks is hard might be really easy for you. Robot was one that people recently went crazy over, and I got it in like the third guess, because I'm always thinking about robots. Uh, and then also how you move through that lexical space. So if you move through the lexical space in a different way, or some in a way that allows you to guess in more optimal ways, um, optimal for the for the Wordle data set, then that's how your game unfolds. So a way to actually determine the best starting word uh, would be to continue doing what I did with those five, you know, taking five observations from each one. You should take about 30 observations for each one, and you could run a one-way ANOVA and see if any of them were actually statistically different. This is something I might do, uh, and if I do, I'll, I'll post an update on it if you're, you know, for those of you that are actually interested in it. Um, the five observations that I have, you know, that's not enough data points. It's enough to give us an idea just for a lecture, a quick look at it, but it's nothing that you could actually, like, publish. And then the other thing is, um, this is from a science perspective and also from like, if you are a person who plays Wordle, um, I think you'll appreciate this, but be the best first word, you can figure out what it is. It does not guarantee a win. Like all it does is give you a better chance at getting some information in the beginning, but that's it. And you could figure out the best second word, but that's completely uh, conditional on what happened with your first word, what information you got from your first word, what information you didn't get, your style of playing, because some people like to use letters that aren't correct, just to try to get a, a better look at all the possible letters that are still left. Some people like to play with the letters that they did get correct, because it gives them a better chance at getting the word in two guesses. I belong to the second category, and I did get a word in two guesses twice. Um, so the game is totally different. I, I really think the best way to analyze it, like linguistically with computational linguistics, we could do every guess, but the only one that we can actually look at and talk about all together as an example type thing like this is, is really the first one. Because after the first guess, it gets crazy from there. It's, all, it's very different you know, for everybody, every word, every game, etc. Then I have a little epilogue because I realized that I actually was using my first word that I have been using is not any of these words. Remember that a tone, stone, and stain came from uh, what we know about English linguistics, English uh, graphology. Um, a tau and shirdlu. A tone, stone, and stain all came from a tau and shirdlu. Other came specifically from digraph frequency, and shale came from placement frequency. 
But what I didn't do was look at the at this graph down here at the bottom of the slide. What I should have done was looked at the actual data set that the words are coming from, because it is not a Tau and Sherdlu, or Eaton Osserhold, or Phaneron, or any of these things that make up the most frequent letters in Wordle. It's ear odal whatever that is. I've been using the word least just off the top of my head. When I started playing, I'm like, oh, I think least is probably one of the best words. Well, guess what? It is a 37% chance of getting a letter anywhere, which is on par with a tone. It's actually a little bit better than a tone. So I was playing better off the top of my head than doing any of that frequency consideration, but we can actually do better than that. But looking at this right here, ear odal, the six most frequent, um, frequently used words in Wordle, you can make orate, O-R-A-T-E. It uses the five first letters, and that gives you a 40% chance of getting any one letter correct. It's absolutely the most optimal guess. And there you have it. That's that's the best uh, that's the best first word. Um, it's the best first word that you can use. Coming from looking at it this way, looking at, at this, the graphology that we know that Wordle has, and that's an interesting point about linguistics as well. Um, a Tau and Sherdlu is true for the corpus that it comes from, which is a huge, 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 huge corpus of books. Eaton Osserhold comes from 40,000 Wikipedia entries. Uh, it's close, but they're not quite the same frequency. Well, why, what's the discrepancy from? It's because the town Sherdlu is from books and um, I believe also written court documents. Eaton Osserhold is from Wikipedia. There's a different style of writing in either one of those. Books are different than Wikipedia articles, especially if they're fiction books, which I know some of the ones to come up with a Tao and Sherdlu were fiction books. So your corpus is going to make a difference. We have an English language, but within the English language, there's different dialects, there's different uses. And so different, uh, different uses are going to have different, slightly different graphologies. And then also you've got the graphology of Wordle, which is a different uh, subgenre in its own. And this is what we see down here. So when we're looking at things like this and studying any language, it's important to think about what, what, you know, what you're looking at. So it's not just um, French. It's classical French literature pre-1800. It's probably going to have a different graphology than modern French political speeches because different words are used more often. And when different words are used more often, that means different letters are used more often. Language is always changing. And uh, the graphology and phonology, because we can do the same thing for like which sounds show up most often in words. The schwa is the most often sound in the English language. So information, the uh at the end of shun there, that's the schwa. It's kind of like the E if we're looking at graphology. Um, it's going to change. Like this, you can look at a certain number of speeches and uh is going to come up, but different types of language are going to have different, most common uh, phonemes or graphemes. If you look just at um, infant directed speech or parentese, there's a lot of E and OO that's going to show up a lot more. Um, not a whole lot of, of even schwa necessarily, because you're really focusing on these words that have these E's and OO's. And so it's definitely going to change. So this is, it's an interesting facet of language. It's an al also an interesting facet of um, statistics, an interesting use case um, for both of these. So an applied look at... Uh, Computational linguistics is what I'm giving you here, I guess. Okay, I'll talk to you later. Have fun.
playing Wordle. And I have to stop this video. There it is. Okay.